Good evening and welcome to Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen from New York City tonight. Happy 2021. I hope your new year is off to a great start. We are now going to continue our predator investigation here on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. Again in Michigan, near the city of Flint, again with the Genesee County Sheriff's Department, and in this case, the Shiawassee County Sheriff's Department as well. And we're going to highlight a case in this episode that raises some interesting questions, and we'll have a discussion about this a little further down the road after everyone's had a chance to see it. But we talk all the time about, you know, what happens when we see a predator surface who's in their late teens. Is there any special consideration to be given there? And such is the case with 18-year-old babysitter Sean O'Brien, who surfaced in the ghost investigation um, just several weeks ago uh, near Flint, Michigan. He, as you'll see, has quite a backstory in terms of fetishes, what he wants to do with a young girl, um, that he talks to in this investigation and what should happen to him. And we get into the discussion at a very deep level with the Genesee County Sheriff, Chris Swanson, who developed and heads the ghost team, obviously. Ghost goes after uh, human suppression of all sorts, uh, including predator-like behavior. So take a look. The ghost team with the Genesee County, Michigan Sheriff's Department has literally taken hundreds and hundreds of sexual predators off the streets, and it's about to add one more in neighboring Shiawassee County, where it's operating a joint investigation. Sheriff's office, Sheriff's office. Come here, come here. Relax, relax, relax. You're okay, you're okay, you're okay. Relax, relax. It's all right, buddy. Hey, just relax. 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 He's in here. You're fine. His name is Sean Alexander O'Brien. He's 18 years old, and he's been chatting online with a girl he thinks is 15. He's got some very specific requests. I like worshiping body and feet and ass and spanking and very strict. Are you okay with younger? What's your age? I'm 15. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay. Will you wear leggings? On my way. Help me to understand how you ended up here today. Have you done this before? So why did you decide to do this today? I don't know, I just, I don't know. You don't know? Yeah, it's just really like, I was just driving, I was like, okay. Um, I just, I just really don't know. And tell me about the conversation you had with this girl. How old did you think she was? Um, I said 15, but I was like, wait a minute. And I just, Put my phone down and then I didn't think of anything of it. Of my brain just kind of went like that. Your brain just kind of went like that. Yeah, it was just like, okay, let's. I guess let's do this and. Let's do this. Yeah, and it's just like I shouldn't have because I've gotten myself into something that I never wish I would have done. What did you say to this girl? Um, I was like, I was excited. You were excited. Yeah. Were you excited because she was 15? No. Were you excited because you have never had sex with a girl before? Is that true? I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that true? Yes. And I've seen the transcript, so you can just go ahead and tell me right now what you said, or I can characterize them for you. Yeah. What did you say? What did you ask her to do? Show me pictures. Show you pictures. And you saw the pictures, yeah. and she made it clear that she was only 15. Yeah, that's a huge mistake. Though. Huge mistake. So right. you know that as an 18-year-old, 
that's a, uh, it's illegal for you to have yeah. sex with a 15 year old girl. And what was this talk about a butt plug? Yeah. Well, explain that to me. I mean, how do you come up with that? You just woke up today and said, I'm going to get online and talk to a 15 year old girl and ask her to wear leggings and a butt plug? Help me to understand this. In the case of the 18-year-old, do you feel sorry for him in some ways? He's a kid, you could argue. You could. Here's what I feel sorry for. Whether you're 18 or we arrested a 32-year-old, a 46-year-old, I feel sorry that they have this demon that they fight every day. Pedophilia, having sex with an underage individual, is a sickness that even the doctors among us, the ones that disagree on everything, agree that that's something that's a psychological sickness. It's the only crime that once you do the time, once you've paid your debt to society, you still have to be on a list for a lifetime or at least 25 years. What does that say? I feel bad for the people that cannot get it out of their head. And so my hope is before they hurt somebody that they get the help they need. I have much more respect for people that fight a sickness and are proactive in their own treatment than when they deny it and they act out hurt someone else. What was supposed to happen here today? What did you want to have happen here today? I wanted a 15 year old girl who you could take advantage of and have sex with. I don't think that's what would happen. I think I would have met her. That probably would have never happened. Just have her show you the butt plug and... No, it's... What made you decide to go online, have this conversation, and then show up here at this location with clearly, based upon the conversation, the intent to have sex with a minor? Well, I don't know isn't a good answer, Sean. All right, I'm a parent as well as a lot of other things. So I get kids make mistakes, yeah, even very adult very kids. Very yeah, so I need to understand how it is that you got here and how to prevent other people from doing the same thing. So help me with that. When you see someone that young, you view it not just as a reporter or an investigator, but I see it as a parent. I've got kids older than that. And it breaks your heart a little bit. And you do tend to feel sorry for somebody that age. But when you consider the harm that person could have caused if we weren't there, and a 14 or 15 year old girl was there, then I tend to feel a little less sympathy for that guy. So what should happen to you, Sean? Probably should be fined. Fined? Go to jail. Go to jail. And what do you say to other male adults who go online, chat up a minor, in this case a 15-year-old, and then show up to have sex with them after a sexually charged conversation? What do you say to other young men who may be thinking about doing exactly what you did today. Well, you know what? I'm going to be honest here. I'm going to explain what happened on this day. I'm going to be like, hey, I went to this place. I tried something. This is the result I got. And if I keep doing that, or even if who knows after this, where I'm going to go. Do you have emotional issues? Do you have a hard time meeting girls? Do you have a bad home life? No, I'm not a bad home life at all. Your was, parents love you? Yep, parents love me. I was adopted, they, they love me. What are they gonna say about this? They'll talk me through what I did and I'll, I'll be, there'll be consequences with it. Yeah. You get why you are in such a boatload of trouble right now? Yeah, I do. 
you could view this as a senior in high school trying to have sex with a sophomore or freshman in high school. And you could suggest that it's a gray area. But in this particular case, when the 18-year-old has a predilection towards S&M, brings with him sex toys that could theoretically cause harm, damage physically and emotionally to an underage girl, and when you consider that this person makes a living babysitting and also has admitted to an addiction to pornography, that's a dangerous stew. And I think law enforcement is within their rights to, to intercede. And it's up to the judicial system at that point to figure out, okay, is this somebody who should get counseling, probation, some sort of incarceration? What is the combination that fixes this person and makes him not do it again? And that's the challenge here because we all want easy fixes in this country, right? Let's be honest here. We want the incarceration, we want the limitation on the computer, we want the drug that makes you no longer want to do this, but it's not that simple. And so it's finding that mix that makes that person uh, never reoffend again. Right, and I'm going to tell you something, and I don't want you to freak out, okay? Do you promise me? Yeah. And do you promise me no matter what happens with law enforcement or criminal charges that you will get help? Yes. And do you promise me that you will become a poster boy for others so they don't make the same mistake? Yep. You swear? Yes, I promise you. I actually have a cousin that I want to talk about. I'm not, not here, but like, I have a little older cousin that he's... He's in fifth grade right now, and I think he's kind of going through a mindset of, I know I hear some stuff from that he probably shouldn't say, and this is one thing that I'm going to tell him. Okay. So you are going to promise me that you're going to get help, you're going to move through this, you're not going to hurt yourself. Nope. No matter what. Nope. I'm going to go home, and I'm going to sit down with my mom and dad and say, this is what happened today. You're going to be a man, buck up, and fix this. Yep. I'm going to, yep. You know. Actually, right when I... There are TV shows that talk about this whole thing. Have you seen them? To Catch a Predator, Hanson versus Predators. Oh, I've heard of them. I've You've heard of them? Okay, now you're in one because I'm Chris Hanson. And we're doing another story on adults who meet children online for sex. Okay. Now I'm trying to be sensitive because of your age here. And you've promised me you're going to get help, right? Yep. And you're not going to hurt yourself? Nope. So I want you to tell me right now what you say to other guys around your age who might be thinking about doing this. What do you say? What do you tell them to keep them out of this trouble that you are in right now? I'm going to go up to them and say, hey, I need a serious conversation with you. What, can we please have a seat? And have a seat? Yep. Just like you are now? Yep. Maybe Or like at a table or something like that in their house. Maybe somewhere private if they don't want parents listening, but I'll probably end up telling the parents too. Okay. Because that's important. Parents need to know what's going on with their children. And if there was a 15-year-old girl here today, Sean, what do you think would have happened? Honestly, I want you to be honest with me. I, I think I would have probably went, probably would have been like, I don't know if we should do this since you're younger. I think it would have been a huge issue, and I think in my mind I probably would have thought there could be police that get involved. And that's something that just I shouldn't do. In the back of your mind, did you think this might be trouble for you today? No. Only except in the long run, I think. Will you ever do this again? Nope. I plan on deleting the app and not doing it. Is there anything else, Sean, you want people to know? If you're having this trouble, please reach out to a parent, to a guardian, or someone that you trust. Trust. That's a huge, important thing that they need to do. Because if you don't, you're going to end up in a situation like this. And you promise me, promise me, you're going to get help. Yep. And you promise me you'll never do this again. Yep. You're going to turn this into a positive. Yep. As dark as it looks at this moment. Yep. Okay. Well, Sean, you're free to leave with these gentlemen over here. Go ahead. Come on, buddy. Put your back in cuffs. Okay. Thanks for being cooperative with us. Yep. Speaks a lot of uh, you. 
admit your mistakes and knowing the mistakes. I'm going to double lock it. It's just a bell squeeze on your wrist, right? Okay. Dobber the crew. You know, no matter how many times I do this, you still have a hard go with somebody who's on the young side, even though legally they're an adult. So you have to hope in this case that Sean does learn a lesson. It would seem that he'd be a candidate for probation. And if he can stay out of trouble and learn something from this, go to college, turn it around, and never get into this sort of trouble again. That's the hope. He promised me. Let's hope he keeps his promise. When will Ghost be a success? I think there's different levels of success. You know, I, it's already a success. If I drop dead tomorrow, I know it's going to carry on. Uh, it's gotten such a, a, a positive sight. It's got such a, a great look. Uh, you know, we have insignias, we have stats, we do rescues. We are, we are already there. But the ultimate success is that it lives without one person pushing it. I want it to be uh, a part of people in law enforcement around the country and whatever influence I can use based on my platform, I'm going to do it. We reached out to Sean O'Brien's lawyer for comment. So far, he has not gotten back with us. O'Brien pleaded not guilty, and his case is still working its way through the court system in Michigan. Our predator investigations will continue. Uh, we have more in the works, both in Michigan and in other states across the country, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, check out the new series on Onision. Onision in real life on Discovery+. Plus. Also, check out my podcast, Predators I've Caught with Chris Hansen on Apple Podcasts. More to come in all areas of our reporting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll be watching.